everyone. Oh, I need my hat. I don't just see my crazy Saturday hair. Anyway, hi, it's me, Teresa from the Silhouette Spot for All Things Art. I am back. I'm back. I am doing this um, porch sign for spring. Okay. I am going to show you how I lay it out. I use, um, where's my little thing? Here it is. I use essential stencils. You know that. I talk about them all the time. This is a five foot uh, springboard, porch board stencil. Love the quality of essential stencil stencils. Um, I have pretty much the little vinyl on here. I have, excuse me, uh, stencils for uh, porch boards for every season and holiday. I just uh, love the quality of essential stencil. And it's really not worth it um, to make your own for these giant five foot or six foot tall port signs. So I am getting ready. I'm doing a time lapse while we do this. So I'm getting ready. I don't know if you can see. I'm laying it out. It takes me a little bit of time to lay it out. I don't use um, 10 inch wide boards. I only use eight inch wide boards. Um, and you know, if you can do lumber math, an eight inch wide board is only seven and a half inches wide. But I prefer that. And these letters fit fine. Um, you just have to be a little bit more careful about lining them up because they don't go right to the edges of the board. So these essential stencils, stencils, that's a little hard to say sometimes. So it spells out spring, but it also comes with this packet. So you can see, this is my work. Oh, well, here it is. This is my work. Um, my nine to five. So it comes, all the porch, essential stencil porch signs come with usually embellishments. This has a flower. This could be a flower or a sun, depending on how you paint it. Um, butterfly, two little butterflies with the... Uh, Wings closed and the wings open, and then this little bird. So I'm going to lay out the word spring first, and then I will see um, if, where and what I want to add to the board. I've already pre-painted my board, it's yellow. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but that I've done. Um, it comes with this little hello too up top. Can you see it here? So hello spring. So I'm gonna add that to the top. I might pull it down a little bit. And usually when I stencil, I tape everything down. When it's a large stencil like this, where's my tape? Oh, here it is. When it's a large stencil like this, I like to tape it down. I use this, this is called a, um, Sewing ruler, or sewing, sewing gauge. I use this as a sewing gauge. Hi, Marianne. Thanks for joining. Um, I use this sewing gauge to put my stencils in the middle to center my stencils on the board or the surface or whatever it is I'm doing. It's a lot easier than trying for me to like measure a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch. I know I need the same uh, length width on either side when I want to do my stencils in the center. You just use this thing, it slides back and forth with your thumb, and you can position your stencil quite easily where you want it to be. You have to pay attention though with the letters. Some letters uh, are designed differently. So whereas you think it should all be the same. It's not really the same because some letters are wider at the top, some are narrower at the top. So you just have to pay attention to that. And then I put a piece of, hey, wanna watch? I put a piece of tape down for that. So. Like in this case, obviously I'm going to have a different space here than here. But my S, I could center this part of the S and this part of the S, the same distance, 
and so I know I, this is a little crooked on the bottom, so I know I have to straighten it out a little bit. And since I moved it, I'm just going to go back and confirm the distance for my S. And it's right. Okay. Pretty much when you get the first one done, and if the first one's straight, you can just attach the rest. I do like to check it anyway. Just to confirm that I'm doing the right thing. And this sewing gauge makes it very easy. Now the serifs on the R are easy because they will line up and you need to have the same distance between them, top and bottom. And I do. Okay, also the same thing goes with the I. And I is uniform, so if you match on the serif on the bottom, you should match on the serif on the top. And four sides. And this one is a little off, so I'm going to fix it a tiny bit over. Okay, I'm just gonna go back and confirm before I stick down another piece of tape. And that is right on the money now. I use painter's tape for obvious reasons. It doesn't stick or adhere. Comes up when you need it to. Sometimes I'll even take a little bit of tape and put it on the edges of my stencil if I think I might um, go off the stencil a little bit, but I don't need to do that with this. Okay, that looks straight. I'm just gonna put down the bottom. And then once it's all, taped down, I'm going to show you another little trick. I also keep a little bit of scotch tape here, clear plastic tape, and I will go in and some of these parts will flap a little bit. I do try and hold them down with my fingers, but I will add just a little piece of clear plastic tape to the parts that'll bounce around a little bit. And I only lose a tiny bit. I don't want to make a bulge in my stencil. Um, I'll just stick it under there. So although I do walk my fingers around to keep everything in place, I do like to add a little bit of tape. And this doesn't pull up the paint either. I just wouldn't use a lot of it on the whole entire project. So I don't know if you can see, I'm going to even do the G down here a little bit, right on the edge. Okay. Oh, thank you, honey. I just got a nice cup of hot tea from my husband. So Anyway, I think because it's spring colors and I painted the board yellow, I'm going to use um, blue paint for my stenciling. This is folk art, uh, look at me blue, multi-surface paint. I need to get a sponge. This is Dollar Tree makeup sponge. Anyway, so um, I like to work in a neat and organized place and uh, I have my scrap paper here. This is what I use my scrap paper for, can you see? So I will dip, get paint nice on my sponge. I want my sponge covered with paint, but not a lot of paint, because then I'm going to take it and tap it off. When you're stenciling, you want very, very light coats of paint. 
and I'll just use that scrap piece of paper um, down a little bit to pounce off my makeup sponge before I go to my surface. Now, as you can, I don't know, can you see? I have a glare, so I don't know if you can see. Um, my first layer of stenciling, of paint on my stencil, is extremely light. There's hardly any paint on there at all. And you want that. You want very light coats. The less paint and the lighter coats that you make, um, the less bleed you'll have. I like these porch boards. Um, this one I think I'm offering for a paint night in March. I'll be posting the calendar for my paint nights coming up um, this week. I have February, March, and April planned out. So I put the tape on here anyway, but I still use my fingers. You can see I hold down the part. What I love, another thing I love about a sense of stencil is although they're stencils and they're attached, the areas where they're what you would call bridged to keep the letters together are very tiny. They're strong, but they're tiny. I usually don't go back and fill them in. Some people do. Um, you can, and then your letter would just be solid and not have a little uh, stencil bridging. But I think on the porch signs, it's fine. And once again, you can see I'm using very white coats with my makeup sponge. Excuse me one second. Honey, is she here? I have somebody picking up an order and she might be here and I feel bad if I don't say hi or thank you. I don't see her. I don't know why my husband went out. Anyway. And when you're all done, usually if I'm just doing a, um, let's say an 8 by 20 inch sign, it's much quicker, obviously. And then I take the stencil and just go right inside and wash it. This one takes a little bit longer, obviously, because it's a five foot sign, porch board. But these stencils, it doesn't matter. When I'm done after doing four coats, three or four coats of stenciling on here, I'll just take it right inside to the sink, wet it down, and clean it with this little tiny sponge I have, or just use a baby wipe. And the paint, for the most part, comes right off. There might be a little bit of build up here and there, but it doesn't really affect the stenciling. Sometimes I'll even use paint from my scrap paper where I've um, offloaded, I guess, the paint, so to say. So it kind of gets, it'll get built up on here. So sometimes I'll just use this paint. So that was my first coat. As you can see, it's very light. And I'm going back for the second one. I will probably end up only doing three coats on this because it is spring and uh, pastel -y. It's not like doing a Christmas or winter porch board with very vibrant colors, especially if you're doing Christmas and red and green. 
you'd want the red and green to really pop on your porch sign or Halloween if you're doing black and yellow you want the yellow or the orange to really pop for Halloween but since this is more of a spring thing um, if my blue is a little on the pastel -y or faint side I think that's fine I think it'll give to the look So like I said, I still use my finger, sorry, to hold down sections of the uh, stencil from flopping around. Get paint, paint. Where is it? Where's the camera? There it is. Get a little paint on my hands, but. You know me, I'm a slob, I always am full of paint. I didn't really know what color I was gonna make this. I had some oops paint downstairs. Jordan number one works for a hardware store on the weekends. Well, not now, she's in Costa Rica. But um, she works at a hardware store on the weekend, so I get quite a bit of Oops paint. If you don't know what Oops paint is, that's the paint that gets made for customers, and then it, it was either made wrong or then the customer didn't like the color they picked, whatever. So um, I am the beneficiary of quite a bit of Oops paint, and believe you me, I put it to good use. So I had this palish yellow down there. So I decided to use that for this spring porch board. Now, you may say, I don't have a porch. I don't have a porch, so I say that. But it's a leaner. You can lean it next to your front door, put it on your stoop. You can put it in the corner in your family room. You can put it leaning next to your front door on the inside of your home. Whatever it is. And they're named porch boards, but you don't have to have a porch. Now, I think if you wanted a porch swing, you'd have to have a porch. But you definitely don't need a porch for a porch board. It's basically just a leaner. And you can prop it. Well, five foot of it, wherever you think it'll look nice. If you're just joining me, I'm using, let me show you, um, Essential Stencil Spring Five Foot Porch Board Stencil. I love Essential Stencil. I love the quality of their stencils. I love their designs. I love how easy they are to clean when you're done. Whether you clean them right away if you're doing something smaller or the paint dries a little bit because you've been working on a five foot board. Just so take them, spray them down with water, put them in the sink, whatever have you, and then I just clean mine up either. Um, with a little sponge or a baby wipe. Baby wipe, Clorox wipe. I have them both. I use them both. I try to use the baby wipes on my hands, the Clorox wipes on my surfaces, but sometimes that gets mixed up too. So I don't know what I'm going to add yet to this. As far as um, these extras go, it looks better against my shirt. The folded butterfly, the full butterfly, the little bird, the sun, the flower. So we'll see. I wanted to get this down first, then I'll peel up these stencils and um, wait for it to dry. 
and then I'll just, you know, lay out those extras and see where I want to put them. Oh, I think she's here. One second. I'll be right back. As I was driving here, I was like, oh, maybe I should have told her, like, I should have tried to come earlier. Who knows? You know, they say it's going to snow, and then it's before. It's I know. It doesn't happen when I have yeah. snow. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Actually, you. My mom wanted me to ask you, do you ship these, like, out of, does she want to ship one to Florida? I will ship them. Um, yes. I want to know how much. Does like $30. Okay. What you is your mom and... and We'll, have, we'll work it out because okay. I do have them on Etsy where I ship them. Oh, but okay. on Etsy, I probably use them in the truck again, right? Day, whatever. So if you contact okay. me, I want to know because she wanted my sister in Canada, so okay. she wants to get the my niece's one. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so you contact me, email me, message me, whatever, okay. and then I'll just give you mom a price. Okay. Well, I'm reasonable. I'm not going to charge her $30 and never, you know. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank, nice you, to see you thank you, Miss. Be safe. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. At a local pickup. Anyway, so I forget where I was. Oh, I know. I was saying when I finish the lettering and it dries, then I will lay out those other um, pieces of stencil. I will probably even look through my collection of stencils, my very vast and plentiful collection of stencils, and see maybe if there's something else uh, that I want to add besides what came with this. Now, ordinarily, you guys know I love to hand paint, and I would hand paint on here, uh, except that I'm offering it as a paint night. So whatever, um, if I were to hand paint, I would pick a design that was manageable for students. And that would, uh, we would be able to finish in the time allotted. I don't like my classes to go over two hours. I think, you know, people then might lose interest. So if I could come up with something to hand paint on here where we could stencil it and then embellish it in a two hour period, I'll do that. But um, for now, I'm just gonna go through my stencils, see what I have, and uh, see about adding to this board. But like I said, that won't be until after the paint dries. So I don't want to mess it up while I'm manipulating the other stencils. For my paint nights, I have multiple um, copies of the stencils. I usually have one stencil for two people, and that seems to work out. But people not having to wait too long and waiting their turn. And, you know, for these paint nights are not just about painting. They're about um, a couple of hours out meeting other people, mostly women. Sometimes I've had a couple of men. Um, so... You know, nobody's in a rush. You don't want to be there forever, but, you know, it's kind of a relaxed atmosphere, and there's a lot of laughs. So there's not an issue with uh, having to share stencils. Oops. People are there for a lot more than just the uh, paint night. They to hang out with friends, they to hang out with family, um, have a little downtime. Painting is my therapy, so maybe they're just there to just be like, oh, this is nice. I'm just going to sit here and stencil and paint and la-di-da. 
I'm just going over some spots now that uh, I feel like needed a little bit more. And I think, I don't hear my, my N. Okay. All righty. There you have it. Can you see the whole thing? Can I, should I lift it up? On the top it says, hello, spring. Now I have to very gingerly peel these up and lay them down over here so I don't get paint everywhere. And I'll show you one more time. Oops, a little piece of tape went flying. So what do you think of the colors? There's the hello at the top. So, thanks. So I'm going to, um, like I said, let these dry a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and probably add something in here, maybe a couple of butterflies along the sides. That's it. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.